We're the alum and we're the closing act, no pressure, John. <laughs> um, so I suppose what we're asked to talk about is um, our own path to the MBA, why we actually ended up sitting in the seats you're sitting in and then taking on, in my case, the two-year course, in your case, the one-year full-time course. Um, tell you how it impacted our career and then maybe share a little bit of advice that you may wish to take or not take down the line. So this was my own um, path to the MBA. I did a huge amount of research. I, I could have done it because it actually took me two years before I signed on to the MBA. Um, I applied twice, got accepted twice, but I actually needed a scholarship to be able to afford the fees. So I did my first round of scholarship interviews. I didn't get them. I didn't get a, I got the bursary, but I didn't get the scholarship I needed. And then I ended up applying the second year. Um, and I got the Aspire scholarship, which is half my fees, so I could take the course then. Um, I'd done the SATs or the GMATs um, to get into it, and I got the score I needed. Um, and I suppose the biggest message I had in terms of uh, getting ready to do the MBA was all of the research I did. Um, I looked around, I, I was happy to do an international MBA. I looked at Harvard, I looked at Duke, I looked at Stanford, I looked at INSEAD. Um, I looked at doing an MBA in China, um, I looked at all the different courses in Ireland, um, they just started up a course in UCC, I looked at Trinity, and I suppose the reason I chose UCD, and it was the only one that I ultimately applied for, was it's triple accredited, which means it's recognised around the world, um, and at the time it was the only course in Ireland that actually was triple accredited. Um, it was the quality of the programme, and uh, whether it was the staff or the material itself, and the various modules that were offered, it was also how they were delivered, whether it was in tutorials, in lectures, or uh, case studies, and you know, your ability to actually choose the modules. But as well as that, it was uh, the type of MBA that I wanted to do. Um, there were, for example, the Harvard and Stanford ones, to me, looked like they were a lot more technical, very focused on the financial and economic elements of the MBA, whereas the UCD uh, program was very much focused on developing a person as a leader which is what I wanted to do in my career. I wanted to manage people, I wanted to manage companies, and I figured, you know what, I need to know a little bit about the financial elements, so I know if the finance guy is trying to run rings around me, but ultimately, you hire really good people, and they form part of the team, and I wanted to manage a team. So that's why um, I chose the UCD uh, MBA. I chose the executive one because I needed to work to support the other 50% of my uh, fees, and as well as that, I, you know, my own research told me that actually when you're you know, learning on one hand and applying yourself day-to-day or -day in the job on the other hand, it's actually uh, really beneficial. And I could use my own day-to-day uh, -day work as case studies on a regular basis, which I did do. I was executive director of Habitat for Humanity Ireland at the time. Um, and that was really, really useful. Uh, I suppose, uh, what else I wanted to say? Um, I also did, I heard one of the previous uh, speakers say that they actually did the course in uh, Citibank in, um, in town, and it, that was much easier for me as well, not having to cross town. Um, but, you know, so there was three courses on the go at the same time, whether it was the weekend or the midweek out here or the midweek in the city centre. Um, but uh, the biggest value for me was the actual size of the cohort. I mean, in other groups, for example, I think Trinity only took in less than 30, and um, UCD took in less than that again, but there was in the region of about 100 the year we did it. Um, when network is important to you, which it was to me, because I saw myself potentially working overseas as I was in Ireland, you know, that was something um, that I wanted to have uh, as an option as well. So, you know, they say a network isn't just for Christmas, it's for life, so you can tap up your network at any stage, and I certainly have done that. Um, in terms of uh, the outcome on the career then, I suppose, like I've already said, I, you know, I wanted very simply bigger, better, more. Um, I wanted more cash, I wanted more opportunity, and I wanted more status. And I think that's normal. <laughs> and it was really nice to actually be in a group of people who were unapologetic for that. Um, some of you guys might think, oh no, I'm coming into a whole cohort of A-type personalities. It's, there's quite a few go-getters in there, but they're, you know, they're usually people who have a dream and a vision and a bit of ambition, and it's really, really healthy and um, exciting to be around that, those type of people. Um, I got recruited into Cluid uh, the week I was doing my final exams in the MBA uh, as new business director, and I suppose bigger, better, more for me. Yes, I did get a significant increase in salary, significant increase in status and opportunities. I've been in Cluid for three years now, and you know, apparently you do six different careers in your lifetime, so I'm 
looking forward to bigger, better, more in my next step as well. Um, in terms of uh, advice for yourselves, um, I suppose if you forgive the analogy, I was looking at an ad during the week and Eric Cantona came on and I don't know about you guys but he was a, a huge star when I was growing up and my family were very uh, excited about Manchester United and we all went over and watched a match and everything and I don't know there's a real significant moment when he I don't know runs off the pitch and tries to bicycle kick some guy in the crowd because it was something he said to him or something like that but I suppose how does it align with the NBA I just was thinking you know for yourselves and for myself um, if you imagine, you know, the NBA is like the Manchester United jersey, but it's, it's Cantona in that Manchester United jersey who actually, in this, well, give a positive reference, he, you know, kicks the ball into the goal or whatever. Um, the NBA isn't going to be the be-all and, be and end-all for you. It's, it's you who are doing it. It's you who's going to sit in an interview. It's you who's going to set your salary value. Um, and it's you who's going to direct your career forever. Um, the other piece about the Cantona thing that I thought was interesting was that... Um, you know, this is obviously an ad, I don't know, what is it, 20 years since he was on the pitch? Um, but like, you know, can he still kick a ball into a net in a spectacular way? Probably. How many people would want to watch him do that? Maybe less than 20 years ago. How many people, or how much would they pay him to do that? Maybe significantly less than 20 years ago. So I suppose the point for you guys is, the minute you sign on to the NBA, start using it. Um, because that's when the value is highest. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you'll still have it in 20 years, you'll still have all the ca capability and experience, etc. but the value is highest, and certainly folks have said that to me, and that's, that's just a bit of advice I'd share with yourselves. But um, 